What's up? What's up? What do being crew? It's your boy Savon Thomas back with another episode of Coffee and Commons. And we are on season five of Game of Thrones. And season four was really good. Season five, I don't want to call it slower because there's a lot of things that happen, but things in certain certain areas are just getting weird. Other things are kind of you know getting pretty pretty cool to see. I was waiting for I got a point of convergence between all the different storylines going on. We've had people meet up and stuff like that, but now you're starting to see like everything really play out. So to start it off, season five, King's Landing is really where the most weirdness is because I feel like, you know, the, the storyline is kind of just like, you know, what do we do with King's Landing? We're kind of focused on Daenerys right now and Jon Snow. So Cersei and, and King's Landing is kind of just like, I was trying to figure things out there. It's not really like the the focal point that it was in the first few seasons. Uh, the focal point more so is now on the wall and on Daenerys and what she's doing um, overseas or whatever, or wherever the location is. But, you know, King's Landing, you know, it's kind of a weird situation where Cersei sets up Marjorie. Um, her brother, Sir Loras, uh, is obviously he's gay. And then Marjorie knows and she, Cersei empowers the uh, militant uh, faith, is what they call it, I believe. But the people who, you know, just, I mean, they're, they are, you know, if you're a sinner, you are charged with, you are charged with that. And if you don't repent for your sin, they kill you, which is wild. Um, but if you do, then they'll give you some type of atonement for your sin, or you do something, or uh, it's kind of, kind of a weird religion that they're, they're following. Um, and so Cersei uh, sets up Marjorie because she lies about her brother's affairs and then they get caught. Both of them get caught. And even though she's a queen, uh, the faith and the crown apparently are now equal and the king can't do anything. If this was Joffrey, I feel like he would just kill everybody and it would have been like a revolt. But maybe it would have been an internal revolt and maybe King's Landing would have went to the crap. Um, but Tommen's like 10 years old. So he's like, what the heck do I do? My queen got arrested. It is what it is. So Marjorie's now in jail. Loris is in jail. Um, the Tyrells are kind of just like freaking out. And then Cersei, you know, being the evil person that she is, she's just like, you know, she's like, oh yeah, I finally do what I need to do. But then she gets caught because she's had incestuous relationships with her brother and then even her cousin, who her cousin is now one of the faith militant and tells on her. And so she has to answer her sins as well. And at the end of the episode, she's walking uh, naked uh, back to uh, the 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 um the castle and so and it's kind of weird like it, i it wasn't so if you guys don't know you know that the actor that plays cersei that wasn't her she has a no nudity clause so it's kind of a weird scene because you can tell it's cgi like the body is real like the person there's a person that's walking naked but her face is cgi onto that girl's body and so it's just it was just weird i was watching and i was like that doesn't seem real why is that fake um, but is it no nudity clause, which I get as an actor or actress, you'd have that. Um, I think, uh, Amelia Clark has that since season, I think season two or three is when she was like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore because season one, I mean, she all the time. Um, so anyways, that's King's Landing. And then obviously, uh, you have Daenerys who, you know, Amelia Clark, I just talked about, she's over, um, doing her deal, freeing the slaves, trying to keep uh marine together uh they are everywhere sons of the harpy are still around she's still trying to keep like you know you know government over them she she's becoming more of a politician and she's marrying one of the local uh people so that the people have a representation within government somewhat like that so she's trying to learn how to rule uh her people Tyrion meets uh Daenerys because of, and this is a recap, obviously, for people that have seen it, you're like, I already know all this stuff. But Tyrion meets uh, Mormont, he kidnaps him and takes him to uh, Daenerys, right? And he, he, so Tyrion's really good at talking, so I don't know why Mormont, I mean, he doesn't, Mormont doesn't know that, but Tyrion gets in good with Daenerys. The conversation between Daenerys and Tyrion was so interesting. It was just a battle of wits. Tyrion's really good, very good with his words. Daenerys is a very smart girl. She's very she's she needs help making decisions, but overall she's a very intellectual person. And so their conversation was just like very, it was a very intellectual person. Because Tyrion was like, "You can kill me, you know, it is what it is." And she's like, "I might." 
<laughs> they're just like going back and forth. And then like after, after like two sentences, Tyrion will be like, yep, yeah, but you know, you could kill me too. And then she's like, yeah, I could, I might just kill you, but I'm not going to yet. And so it was just, it was just funny. I, I really enjoyed the conversation between them. Uh, I, I think Tyrion will definitely, um, it's going to happen to where he's fighting against his family. He's going to fight against Jaime. He's going to fight against Cersei. Um, I mean, I get Cersei, but I think it's going to be emotional for him when he has to fight Jaime. Because Jamie is now pissed at Tyrion about at Tyrion for killing her father. He even said to Cersei, he's like, if I ever see him again, I'm killing him. Um, but Cersei, I, I get, though. But Jamie is going to be emotional for Tyrion because he's always been his brother. And he was there for him. Like, he helped him escape. There's a lot. So that's, that's um, you know, Daenerys in, in Season 5. Um, she has to, She's also dealing with uh, realizing that Mormont was a spy. But Mormont loves her. He's, he, he stopped spying on her. And so he has to try to earn her, her keep and her trust back. Um, and with Sir Barristan dying, I feel like they're going to introduce him back into the fold of him being her guard or something. something. They're going to do something. I mean, obviously, you have the Unsullied, you have Grey Worm that guards her, as well as Dario Naharis, her lover, um, guarding her as well. But having Mormont there will definitely be a big help. And I think they're going to introduce him back into the fold just as a sword for her for her to have you also have Sansa who I I hate what's going on for Sansa because she was in the capital she she thought she had a good thing when she moved season one she thought she had a good thing going when she moved to the capital to marry Joffrey she's like I'm going to be queen it's gonna be awesome did not go that way then she was trapped in the capital for three seasons really I guess not really four Four ish. She was trapped out for three in like half seasons, but she escaped in the first season, first episode. And then she goes to her aunt. Her aunt try, threatens to kill her. Then, you know, Littlefinger's kind of just helping her out. I still don't trust Littlefinger, uh, B, uh, Baelish, Peter Baelish. But he saw he, he's the one that's done the most for her because he helped her escape. He's given her a place to live. But now she got betrothed to. Ramsey Bolton, who was a sadist, and I was like, man, I was like, I was, I was so badly hoping that they wouldn't marry them together, um, and then she chose to marry Ramsey, only to find out that he is a very sadistic person, um, and he enjoys people's pain. It just uses her for me. I mean, that sucks that she lost her virginity to him. I was like, dang, that sucks. But I mean, I guess that's just life back then. So when when she finally is able to escape. Um, I was so happy. I say escape. I say escape. Reek, which I hate calling that, Theon, you know, helps her jump from the from the castle after the war where Sandis Baratheon dies. Um, and it was so. And it's it's so it sucks that her putting the candle in the in the in the tower was like seconds between her, Brienne of Tar seeing it and her putting it up there. Literally seconds, but. You would think that, you know, maybe she could still see the tower from where she was at, but I don't know. It is what it is. It's a TV show. So it's meant to be dramatic. So Theon, the, but at the end of the season, Theon um, and Sansa jump from the castle into the snow. I so hope they escape because they killed, um, what's that girl's name? Megan or whatever her name is. <laughs> it's definitely not Megan, but they killed Ramsey's true love, really the girl that he actually loves, that he's, I mean, they've been together for forever. They, they love killing people together. Um, he killed her. Um, and so if they if they get caught, there's going to be some wild stuff happening to, to them from Ramsey. Like, the, the amount of torture I'm assuming is going to happen, going to be wild. And I don't look forward to seeing that season six. If it does happen, it's going to suck. And then lastly, Night's, the Night's Watch. So... Again, I already told you guys this in the last video, but I I realize now that Jon Snow's a real one. He takes over as Lord Commander, he's voted in as Lord Commander um, of the Night's Watch, and he starts working with the Wildlings, the Free People. And it's it's so wild that his people turn on him. Like at the end of the season, he gets stabbed. I don't believe he's dead. I know he's still, first of all, I don't believe he's dead because I know he's still alive because I know that he survives till season eight. So. I wasn't as shocked when he when he got stabbed and he's supposedly dead as I was when Rob died because I I didn't I didn't know that Rob was gonna die. This one, Jon Snow got stabbed. He's not dead because I know he's not dead because 
the, the show. I mean, I, I've I've heard stories about the show. I know he's not dead. He's not dead yet, at least. Um, so like, I wasn't super shocked when they stabbed him, but I was like, "What the crap?" So I thought it was like a dream. We'll see what happens in season six and how they how they do this. Maybe he like rises from you know the dire wolf dying or something like that, because, like they did for for Brad or something. I don't know, but we'll see season we'll see season six what happens with Jon Snow. As of right now, he is dead. Yeah, I know of at least. But hopefully he, I don't know, figure, they figure out some way to bring him back to life. They will, because I know how the story plays out to some extent. Um, so I'm excited to see that. But that anyway, that's my recap and reaction to each parts of the different season. Um, th this season four so far has been my favorite. Season five was good as well. The stories are starting to converge. I'm just ready for everything to converge upon each other. Whether that's everybody fighting against the army, the the uh, the army of the undead, the the upper they call the night the night walkers or the white walk the, the white walkers um everybody fighting against that huge army that's gonna be interesting um i don't know we'll see what happens but excited for um season six to get into it and watch it so that's my recap and reaction thanks for tuning in to coffee and comments